Sure. <laughs> Glad you all are all here. Um, let the record reflect that all members of the council are present. And I uh, appreciate Mr. Dickinson uh, bringing to our attention that you couldn't hear anything we were saying. Um, I'm going to pass it to Mr. Probst for the city administrator update. Yeah, I'll, let me restart and maybe I'll be even uh, quicker this time. So, um, as you know, we, we're about a year into this pandemic and we've managed pretty well so far, but our employee base is still seeing some fairly high numbers of uh, COVID cases here. We're trying to get through that, trying to work with Walton County and uh, Department of Public Health. They're the ones that are going to be mainly delivering uh the vaccine rollout here but we're just there to assist in any way we can and then you know when we get to public safety and the 65 plus for our employee base um you know we'll roll those vaccines out as well for those eligible folks but um we're continuing with you know keeping city hall and uh, police station fire station all that closed to walk in traffic but we're still taking meetings so on and so forth um but business is continuing as usual, we have the occasional appointment we have to take, and and uh, that that's still working out pretty well. Um, I do want to get into our 2021 projects. Uh, we've got a lot going on this year, whether it be in our generally approved CIP budget or something else that is going to be coming down the line for your uh, approval as, as we're working on it. And let me just go through some of these quickly just uh, to give you a little taste of what all is going on outside of just general day-to-day -day operations. Um, Alcovey River sewer line and pump station tie-in is going to be a big project coming up. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant uh, re rehabilitation bid and construction, we're going to be getting into that this year. We're finishing up the Loganville water line and uh, connecting to their system uh, down, at, down at the far end of the line. Right now, finished up that easement um, actually this week. Uh, for, for the last easement there. Uh, we're going to have an upsized finished water transmission line from Cedar Ridge to Charlotte Rowell Boulevard. We're going to upsize the water line. Um, working on engineering and bid right now uh, for that. Let's see, we've got the water line from the water plant to the public site. Um, that's going to be a 20 inch connection. We've got 2020 CDBG stormwater project. We've got the downtown green final engineering. Um, we're working on it. We've got the concept done. Uh, pretty excited to show you that soon. Um, and then we'll hopefully get to construction bids later this year. Uh, further parks, master planning uh, and improvements. Uh, we've got the TAP grant. That's the one that connects the streetscape from Maribel uh, through Broad to Highland over to North Lumpkin to Spring. We've got several traffic calming projects that we want to get together in concept and have a, you know, a public meeting so everybody has full understanding of what we're looking for there on Midland, Highland, Pinecrest, Barrett, and South Madison. Um, we're continuing with the, the truck bypass. Um, we got an update today. Uh, let date of summer of 2022 is when the construction should actually start according to GDOT as of today. Uh, the downtown solid waste master plan, we're going to be working on it this year. Transfer station improvements. Wayne Street sidewalks and streetscape engineering, we're working on right now. That'll be a big uh, game changer in broadening downtown. Uh, we've got the highway parking lot improvements just across from City Hall here where so many people like to park. That's going to be coming uh, very soon. Uh, we got bids back on it, I think, this week. Um, South Madison milling and paving, uh, now that that CDBG uh, sewer job is done, we're going to be paving it. Uh, other LMIG street paving go along with it. We've got alleyway improvements for utility cleanup and drainage improvements. We've got a water tower and upsized line to the Piedmont Industrial Park. Um, uh, potentially a, a groundwater, a, a, a ground tank for uh, water at the north end of our system, probably around Walton Road. Um, of course, you know about the Fiber Monroe kickoff that we're going to have taking place. Um, continued electric system automated switching. Today's a perfect example. We lost a uh, good bit of power across the city uh, just from one, one little power failure. So we're going to continue 
uh, standing that project up. Downtown and park Wi-Fi deployments will will be uh, continued, and uh, East Walton gas line extension. Rodney's been working very hard with his crews on that. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the airport runway repaving improvements. I think we'll talk about that tonight. Um, we're f facilitating additional private party airport investment. Chris has been working very hard with that as well. The police department finish up at Walton Plaza. We're almost there on it. And then uh, hopefully we can start Walton Plaza Phase 2 rehabilitation. We'll discuss that, you know, later on this year. Um, and then, of course, we've been working greatly with uh, uh, Walton County Economic Development Team um, with, with a variety of, you know, project inquiries here. And then, of course, uh, to follow up on our uh, retreat from a couple weeks ago, planning and code process revisions and ordinance updates. Um, and then, of course, with the police move, we're going to have um, – an RFQ with DDA oversight um, to see about selling that building and putting it to its highest and best use. So no shortage of work going on here. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Are there any questions for Logan? I have a question for Logan. Yes, um, sir. Where are we with that project over um, with public? I've noticed there's not any work going on out there. Yeah, good question. A lot of people are asking that. I just spoke with a developer yesterday. They're going to be dropping the construction trailer, uh, planning on Monday if weather holds. Uh, Brian and his electric crew were out there running uh, some power lines to get them set up uh, yesterday and today. So we're just waiting on them. They've already picked up the building permits, so it's all systems go. And I have I one more question. I got one more yes. question with the um, with the cable bill. Was that cable initially supposed to start in January with a price increase? Or have y'all been slowly increasing that price? No, that was a, a January one start. Were we charging ahead of the cable bill? Because when I got my cable bill, I got the full amount in that cable bill was charged from last month. And that was in the first part of January. So there's no way I should have been paying the full bill in the first part of January. So help me understand that. Well, we, we'd have to take a look at that offline, uh, your particular bill. I can, I can work with Beth on that just to see when your bill dates are. That's it for me. Mr. Mayor, yeah. I had one question too. Yes, sir. Uh, Logan, you said that the truck route construction is supposed to commence uh, summer of 2022. Yes, sir. Is that actual year or the DOT's fiscal year, or does that line up to be the same thing? Uh, according always to today's that. update, yeah, it doesn't always line up, but according to today, you know, they're saying summer of year 2022. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. Thank you. So they're in, in right away acquisition right now. Um, they've only acquired a handful of parcels, but they got most of them uh, under some sort of uh, process at the moment. Okay, thank you. I, yeah, I get that. Parts. I get that question probably 350 times a week. <laughs> Logan, did I hear you uh, comment on where we are on the sewer plan upgrade? Yes, um, Rodney may want to speak to it as well, but. Uh, Hofstetter is supposed to be putting out two different bids. There's equipment and then construction, and I think those are supposed to go in March and April of this year. Any other questions or comments for Logan? I know he's got a load of on his plate. Uh, I've got one. Do we have um, a time on the Madison paving? Um, that's still planned first quarter. That is as soon as we can actually get some asphalt. I believe that's correct, isn't it, Mr. Steele? Still lined up for March. April. I think it's. We're looking at the first part of the second quarter, which would be April, May, just yeah. to assure good weather and and good um, working 
environment to uh, make sure the asphalt bonds properly. I got a question for Jim. Hey. Are they going to pave over that asphalt or are they going to uh, mill the asphalt and put another um, layer there? They will mill two inches of the existing and then replace it as is. Okay. Thank, thank you, everybody. Um, moving to Central Services update, Mr. Bailey. Thank you, sir. Um, month of January, uh, ground crew, parks guys picked up uh, almost 3,400 pounds of uh, trash throughout the city, uh, cemeteries, right-of-ways, parks, et cetera. Um, to the police station, municipal court update, we are right now in the final kind of phases, and I know it sounds like that's what we've talked about for a while, but we finally have flooring that is available um, due to the COVID uh, delays on everything and shortages. That's actually going in as we speak. Um, they're working on that, uh, putting a, one other area of carpet down, uh, polishing concrete in the back areas, staining that, cleaning up floors. We're trying to knock out some punch list items as we go instead of waiting until the end, uh, just so we can hopefully speed up the finished product. Um, cable guys and uh, are contracting out uh, through Cable East, I believe, uh, to install fiber into the building, uh, working in, uh, working in uh, cohesion with uh, our cable guys. Um, let's hope move in ready sometime in the spring. I know uh, RV will be excited for that. I know we've gotten furniture bids, some different things in place. Uh, I've got uh, the logos and everything and the signage for the front of the building and then the monument sign. Uh, that will take place of uh, the old existing monument sign that's out front. All of that's in design phase, and let's hope that's all ready uh, come springtime. Um, we're also, Logan mentioned, uh, fixing up the rest of the uh, Plaza Shopping Center. We're waiting on bids to hopefully come back to us to uh, basically rehab and redo the exterior and the roof of that existing facility as it goes down the other leg. Uh, towards Spring Street, so we can then move forward with the future plans of of that. Um, the other little small tidbit: uh, if you've been by the library recently, you'll notice that the uh, the Leland Cypress trees that had really overgrown into the parking lot have been trimmed back. Uh, those lights outside in the parking lot have been uh, converted to LED, as has all the uh, exterior and interior lights of the library. That was uh, something that we partnered with the Azalea Regional Library System, and ours was included to that. So it'll be a nice new look when they can actually get open back up and allow patrons into the library. And I'll be glad to take any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Bailey? I got one question for Logan. Are we, I was told that you all were doing away with the, um, health program downstairs with the um, physician. Can you explain what's going on with that? Yeah, so um, after doing some analysis with Mr. Russell, um, who's been working closely with, with our insurance carrier, um, the cost-benefit analysis for continuing with CARE ATC, uh, that clinic in the basement, just wasn't there anymore, especially since we've kind of been in pandemic mode. They actually kind of scaled back their services. At the same time, we still had um, the ability to do through our existing insurance, the Teladoc, and that's worked out really well. So basically the cost benefit was we figured out how much it would cost us to run the clinic versus how much it would cost us just to cover our employees co-pays for up to six visits um, per per calendar year and it actually works out better in the employees favor going that way rather than just continuing the clinic you know as we have been is that is that good explanation are there, are there any other questions Hearing none, we'll move to committee information. Uh, Mr. Gregory, are you are you on? I am, and uh, I'm ready with that finance report. Is that what we're uh, so we're going with? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
And uh, with that being the case, I'll hand it off to anyone else who's more qualified than me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gregory. I don't know that I'm more qualified, but I will give the report. Um, the December financial status report that you have in your packet, um, I want to point out these are not finalized December numbers. Um, we are still um, doing accruals and um, the year end book entry. So these are unaudited. Once we get audited um, financials, I will provide those to you. Um, but as of right now, um, looking at 2020, the overall revenues exceed expenses in all major funds citywide, um, which is good news since we were in the middle of a pandemic for most of 2020. Um, and I will give kudos to Logan and all the department heads because um, they did a great job of keeping expenses low, um, which is what we asked them to do as soon as we realized things may not go as well as planned. But um, things went really well for us in 2020, um, all that being said. Um, we continue to see an increase in sales tax um, revenues um, overall year over year. It was a 6% actual increase. Um, we did see a 13% increase year over year from 19 to 20. Um, however, that's due to that Department of Revenue audit that was in September. So um, actuals were um, a 6% increase. So that um, is good because that means everyone is shopping local and the local economy around here is um, on the uptick. So. Um, property tax collections as of to date is at 97% of budgeted thus far. Um, so that's a good indicator as well. Um, the average monthly payment and budget billing program that we rolled out just this month, just a couple weeks ago actually, um, has been doing really well. We have about 75 customers who have already enrolled, taken advantage of that program. So um, we're trying to get the word out to everyone. We did bill insert and did some um, information on social media to try to get that out to all our customers. Um, our annual year end audit is underway. Um, staff is working hard to get that. All those entries done that I referred to, um, Malden and Jenkins, our external auditors will be on site um, to start their field work um, for the next two weeks. They'll be here next Tuesday and be here for two weeks. Um, and the last but not least, um, the city of Monroe received the certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting from GFOA, and this is the 18th year that we received that um, for our CAFR. Um, and I will answer any questions that you may have. Congratulations on your uh, 18th year in a row getting that award again. That's a big deal. Thank you. I think we need to go to renewal of the property and casualty, casualty information, Beth? Yes. Um, so this is the renewal for our property and casualty insurance. Um, just as you said, this is for the premium renewal coverage from April 2021 to April 2022. Um, there's only a slight increase over the premium of $5,434 year over year. And I will hand it off to Bob Seville with Seville & Associates to go over um, the details of it with you and answer any questions you might have. Okay, I'll take it from here. Um, uh, I think everybody has a copy of the uh, one page summary sheet uh, that we distributed it by email. Is that everybody have that? Um, and our, uh, I have to tell you that the majority of the cities uh, and counties right now are experiencing double digit increases in the property and casualty insurance market. And uh, I'll be brief here. I could, I could talk for a long time about how great this renewal is, but uh, we write 300 cities and most of them are seeing double digit increases with excellent experience. Uh, this year we moved the coverage from uh, state national, which was a, um, a carry we'd been with for a long time and we moved it over to Travelers. And Travelers was the carrier we moved from to go to State National. Uh, 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 Travelers came in on that, the lines that they write about $1,000 less than the expiring coverage, which was really remarkable because uh, y'all are probably familiar with some of the loss experience we've had. And I won't go into detail here, but, um, but our loss experience is up over 100%. So uh, the incumbent carrier and 
two or three others we surveyed uh, were some were up as much as a hundred thousand dollars over expiring. Uh, so we're very pleased with the renewal that Travelers gave us, and we even managed to get the law enforcement deductible down from fifteen thousand to ten thousand, which that's not happening to anybody, as you can imagine, in the, today's environment. Uh, the, the second important thing to point out is that there is uh, no communicable disease exclusion on here, which is, is your COVID-19. Uh, and eventually we'll see that, but uh, right now there's no exclusion for that, which is uh, on most, most policies. Um, the, the two areas that went up were the uh, cyber liability and you'll recall last year we increased those limits to $5 million. And um, the cyber uh, liability line as a whole has, has been a, uh, uh, unprofitable, as you can imagine, through uh, all uh, public entities are the major target. And so we're seeing uh, anywhere from 30 to 100% uh, increases. Uh, since we didn't have any losses, ours was about 25%, which was about $5,000. And then uh, the airport liability uh, has been flat for 10 years, and uh, this year it went up slightly. So uh, the caveat here is that I should mention is because we were able to keep this so low right now, uh, our... Uh, uh, Premiums may have a 5% or some kind of increase next year if the market continues to be hard. So uh, with that said, uh, are there any questions? <clears throat> any questions for Bob? Going to be moving forward with that next week. Beth, is there any additional information you need to share? Yes, sir. Thank you, Bob, for attending. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Moving to the airport, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Bailey. Thank you, sir. Um, just a couple of quick highlights. Uh, fuel sales, I, uh, they were up profits for uh, 2020 were the highest that we've had since uh, the build of the fuel farm back at, uh, I think, August of 2015. Um, we saw an increase last year, and then uh, we saw a pretty good increase this year. So our sales, among everything else, I mean, we've, we've done well um, in total transactions, revenues, costs of uh, purchasing fuel and dispensing it were lower than it has been. Um, the 12 unit T hanger is actually complete. Uh, they finished this past Friday, I believe, uh, and have essentially handed it back over to us to do final grading work, uh, do, uh, do paving, get the uh, utilities installed. And uh, that should start this coming week, uh, weather dependent. And um, unless there's any questions, that's all I've actually got on the airport report. <coughs> Um, go ahead, Chris. You got another? Yeah. Then the uh, <clears throat> the item of uh, of action for the committee tonight uh, is the um, is the request of the approval of the paving of uh, the runway uh, to Atlanta Paving and Concrete Construction. They were the low bid of uh, three bidders um, that came in January seventh. Uh, GMC Network has actually uh, vetted everyone went through everything, uh, Atlanta Paving and Concrete had everything that they needed um, that was required. And uh, this will actually, because of grant funds and the way it works out, only cost us about $45,000 as the contract currently sits, uh, should we seek approval. Came in roughly 400000 under budget. So that was a major win for the city, for the airport. Um, and I'd be glad to take any questions, but asking for approval of that tonight. Chris, is that that 888,000 and change, is that um, a reimbursement expense that will net out um, 44,000 in costs? Yeah. Or am I, okay. 
Yes, that the eight hundred and eighty eight thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars, like a brand smart price. Um, they uh, that was their total bid. So yes, we will be reimbursed ninety five percent of that. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Do we need a motion to um, vote for next week? I'll make yeah. a motion. We uh, approve that for full council next week. Can I get a second? Second. I'll second. Who's second? I'll second that motion. I didn't hear second. Okay. That's fine. All in favor for the meeting? I mean, uh, voting for next week for approval? Favor by saying aye? In a we'll move it to next week agenda. That is all for Thank us. you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Uh, moving to Mr. Dickinson, public works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Smith, solid waste, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dickinson. Um, we got a couple projects we're going to jump start for 2021. Um, we're in the process of installing um, an automated gate at the Monroe Transfer Station entrance. Uh, that'll give us a little more access control, safer for the ladies that opens up in the mornings. Uh, also, it's going to help support the new scale system that we are uh, proposed to install and um, to help with the uh, uh, the kiosk where they can do an automated trucks can actually print their own ticket. Um, and we should be done with that uh, gate by the end of this month, uh, end of this week. Install the other half of the uh, overlay. Um, looking to get it done by April uh, 9th and 10th, that weekend. Also, transition to the 65-gallon carts uh, for curbside recycling. And the customers that uh, uh, that's actually participating uh, starting in April give us time to get the delivery. Whoop, I think we lost him. Yeah, Danny just dropped. Uh, Power just went out. There he is. He's back. He disappeared. I'm, am I back? <laughs> You're back. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Something happened. Uh, yeah, we want to get customers out uh, uh, the education piece and the notification where they know exactly what to uh, put in the containers. It'll be the same stuff but you'll have more room it'll be dry be cleaner and uh, look like it'll, it'll increase our waste diversion uh, of course the transfer station increased again for the month of december compared to 2019 uh, we were up almost 1100 tons compared to 2019. Um, i do have a report for the tonnage for the entire year and look like my internet is acting up again, but uh, I'm gonna try to get through this. <laughs> uh, um, our our tonnage was up, and that equaled um, tipping fees of three hundred and almost three hundred eighty thousand dollars. That's what the city of Monroe. Uh, the temperature represented like a fifty thousand dollars savings. So it can't make a difference once we uh, increase our, our uh, recycling. Uh, and there is a, um, a detailed report that you can look at the numbers. And the only thing I have is the glass collection is going pretty well. Uh, we got 250, maybe 260 customers. We made our first delivery last week to um, College Park. And uh, they are paying us $25 a ton for the material. And I take any questions that you might have. All right. Thank you. Any questions? All right. It appears there are no questions. So we'll move to Mr. Still. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Um, 
without going through the report, I'll just I'll just try to catch you up with what's going on right now. We're in the middle of, as you know, cold weather, which means bad things happen under the ground, which translates to bad things happening above the ground as far as our, our infrastructure goes. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game when it comes to uh, catching up to utility cuts, making sure they're passable until we can get a hot mix in place for that. The guys are doing a great job of that. Still maintaining some right away. Um, it's a good time of the year to, to do some aggressive cutback uh, before the green up. Um, we've do, doing that with our side boom tractors and our right away crew. Uh, they're doing a great job with that. Biggest thing, uh, we are closing in on the end of our leaf season. Uh, one probably big last push to get that out to the curb, get that up, um, and then it'll be time for those guys to get back onto the right away full steam. Um, so I'll be glad to take any questions uh, specifically about what I talked about or anything that may be in the report or anything else. Uh, it appears there are no questions, so that's all we have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, moving to utilities, Mr. Little. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Thompson, uh, you're going to give us the monthly election telecom report? Yes, sir. And uh, to give you all an update on the outage today, we, we had just got that outage done about the so a switch, one of our uh, junction switches that we had used to get the residents of the Church Street area back home. Uh, uh, just for lack of a better term, basically caught on fire. So we have an outage. Right now, our crews are actively assessing that. We hope to have that back up shortly. Uh, my, I'm going to turn my video off to make sure my audio comes through because it looks like my internet connection out here in Gratis is not that great. Um, to update you on a couple of projects, yes, the uh, Publix line. Uh, they did not give us the, what we had asked for in a lead time on getting that power line to that uh, trailer, but we are meeting their timeline. Uh, all poles and guy wires were set today. We should start pulling wire tomorrow uh, if we can get done with this um, outage over here in the Church Street area, I hope, by that time, which is great news. So we can meet their timeline by first of the week. Uh, we've met every other timeline they put on us. And we plan on meeting all the rest. Um, as Mr. Bailey said, we do. You will see uh, Cable East and Quanta Services. They're two of the contractors we're using to place duct work around town for our fiber project. Uh, we are strategically pay, placing large numbers of ducts to pull out to individual neighborhoods, uh, and we included the police department as part of that. Um, so what you'll see is these big duct banks going in as we wait for material to actually do these subdivisions. We have issued the first POs. We actually got some of the first material in for the project uh, this weekend. It came in on Sunday. Uh, we weren't uh, exactly excited to have it on Sunday, but we were glad to have it. Uh, we're waiting on some hand holes and some distribution taps to start our underground phases. Those phases will start off of Amage Bridge and Michael Etchison. Uh, we are Finishing up, we've made a PO for our overhead phases, which will be uh, in the Pollock McDaniel area. Uh, what we will be focusing on originally are some of the places that we have already done electrical rebuilds because we have uh, good maps. We have good maps in those areas that we did when we built the electrical system back. And so what we'll do is while those are being built, we will clean up the maps on the areas that haven't had electrical rebuild. And with these products we're using, you have to have pretty much exact measurements to, uh, to make these products work. Um, we're about 80% done on Edden Drive with that uh, three phase build to that uh, new uh, development up in there. The first Wi Fi unit has been deployed and is testing uh, in the downtown area. My guys, uh, Mayor, I told you they were meeting to, uh, today. They actually met yesterday with the payment processing place and the, the, the program provider that allows them to have uh, uh, outside non-customers have access to the system. So that's being tested and moving forward. It's getting placed onto the, uh, to the server. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. And I'll take any questions y'all may have. Do, any questions? Did they come up with a plan, Brian? Did they come up with a plan for accepting those payments? They have the, the, well, there's a plan. They're just going through the process of the uh, of the program, and there's a software that handles that. 
So they're getting that put okay. on our server. Uh, yes, there's a plan. It's just you've got to make sure that software works correctly. Gotcha. So we just to give you all an update, I'm getting alerts here left and right about our outage and we're dropping circuits back all the way to Spring Street uh, to take that broken switch out of service to replace it. So um, that's going to be actually, wait a minute, I just got an alert where the windfield area just came back on. So that power is back on. I'll, I'll make sure once we get, I get done with my report and uh, I'll get it with Jim and make sure we're, we're good. But I'm showing power at uh, the uh, wastewater plant on, at the Gouda site and power on the Winfield node, which is out past where this switch is. Don't, uh, don't, we, have switches, don't we have switches available to, to start rerouting? Yes. Yes, but this, if, if this could happen with either an automated switch or a manual switch. When the switch doesn't completely close on a, on a rebuild, when you're bringing it back up, you have so much right. load on a cold night like this the connector burns off. And I just got a text from um, Jim Holbrook, our, our line foreman that said, everything's back on. Okay. So that's the end of my report. If I have any questions, uh, I will surely take them. Thank you, Brian. Uh, sure. You going over the fiber pricing schedule? Yes, sir. And on page 78 is, I don't know how that worksheet got in there, but what we're talking about is on page 79. So what we did is we looked at existing pricing from our main competitors, which is Com which are Comcast and Windstream. So what I charged the staff to do was to, we want to beat them on, on price and service. And when we got to their, their services, what we found out is there was one, one customer that they were not, they, they just weren't considering. And that customer is someone like me, uh, a customer that's not very, data intensive, this wants to stream, you know, it's two people in the home, they just want to stream a couple of products or the, the lower income customer that just, just wants some internet, doesn't want, you know, all the, the one gig, you know, running the whole house Wi-Fi. So what we did is we, we matched their products, but we, we also decided to go with a symmetrical product. Whereas the Windstream product is a one gig down, it's, a, it's another number up that they do not disclose. Um, and they're, they're 500 meg, it's 500 meg down, but again, another number that they don't disclose on the upload. Uh, so we went symmetrical to give the customer the ability to run his, you know, run their security cameras, their doorbell cameras, run all those sorts of things, but also beat Windstream's price. But then we also interjected a 25 megabit product for that customer again, either a low income customer that just needs some internet or Customer uh, like me or like Mr. Brad, me and Mr. Bradley discussed today. You know, it's just two people in the home that is uh, that will be uh, very nice for the customer. Now, on the resident, do I have any questions on the residential product? My only question here, Brian, is uh, this page seventy-eight is included. Is this yeah, in how we compare? That's, that's 78, Nathan. I, I don't even know what it is. I, I obviously sent it over to them. Uh, and it's a lot of worksheet stuff that we were putting in uh, and some promos that Windstream had going on around their network. And I'll get to that promo possibility later all throughout, uh, you know, everywhere, all across the country. Uh, but what we did is we actually broke down to the Monroe area uh, and compared those products. So, Brian, just to clarify something you and I talked about earlier, but basically in this package of the 100 slash 10 at $65 a month, that's, that's, that's should cover almost everybody that needs whatever they need. Mr. Bradley, what we're talking about is the, uh, is page 79, the 25 meg, which would be $21.99 or the 50 meg, which is $53.95 would cover those customers. And Beth says I'm breaking up, and I'm sorry, but I, I, I'll, the next meeting I'll hand I'll do it at the office because my internet is just unstable here uh, out in Granis. It's again, it's page seventy nine. Uh, this is the proposed price list that staff okay. would like for us to adopt. Yes, sir. So on business, again, we beat them. 
with non SLA best, best effort pricing. But we also have customers that want to pay a little extra money to get a service level agreement. And so we continued with those prices that those customers uh, seem to enjoy and seem to like. They like to hold our feet to the fire on certain very specific actions. Now these are only pond SLA items. All these projects are coming, all these prices will be coming off of our ADTRAN passive optical network system. Pound for pound, that, that pricing structure for the amount of gigabytes or megabytes you get is seems to be pretty impressive. Uh, we, we hope so. We think, we think it is a very good, especially on the residential side. It, yeah. is, a, it is a strong product. Um, we think that we, especially with a gig by gig, we will be able to uh, compete well in the market and provide the customer uh, what they need and meet our financial uh, needs of the system. Well, and, and just the reliability too on fiber is so much greater. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's price, awesome. From a pricing standpoint, people that have our existing product that are using it today for streaming and uh, internet usage, their pricing is not significantly different here from what they're paying today. I, actually, Mr. Bradley, the, the their pricing will either be, for the 25 megabit package especially, will be lower than what they're paying today and a better product. But even with the 50 meg? Yes, it, will be, it won't be significantly higher, but it'll be a little bit higher, yes, sir. I think, yeah, because I'm currently I'm paying $129 a month for 100 megabytes, right. I believe. Yes, yeah, and that, that, the, 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 what happens there, Mr. Bradley, is that fiber resource is so much more unlimited compared to that cable resource. We have to keep that cable resource very well controlled because there's just limited resources. Uh, but when you turn right. it over to fiber, the, the resource level just goes out the roof. And you're, yeah. you're able to provide that package at a much cheaper cost. He, he says it's going to be ready tomorrow, right? <laughs> I wish. I wish. We do, have, we do have new subdivisions that are up and running that we, we will be able to push these packages to almost, almost immediately. Miss Thompson is in the middle of her audit season, and she wanted me to at least give her a month to roll these out. We also would ask that y'all allow us on a very limited basis uh, for you know a month or two at a time when we come into a new market to be able to do a promotional price. Say we drop that price by two thirds for a couple of months just to get that customer because our, our competitors are doing that. Are there any other questions? Is there a motion to adopt the pricing schedule? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chair. By Mr. Larry Bradley, is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Was that Mr. Gregory? Yes. Second by Mr. Gregory. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. And we I'm recommend gonna, that to full council. I'm going to step away and uh, get with Mr. Holbrook and figure out exactly what happened with our year a few minutes ago, if y'all don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. All right, see y'all. Thank you, Brian. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, next item would be the uh, Mr. Middlebrooks in the water, sewer, and gas report. Thank you, Mr. Love. Uh, just a couple of updates on some projects uh, we got going on. We just completed the gas loop on uh, Unicia Drive. Uh, this was a pressure improvement to uh, help maintain the pressure at the end of the line out at the chicken houses on uh, 186 in uh, Morgan County. Uh, the crews have started the Highway 186 gas at, uh, expansion, uh, the 6th cent. Uh, gas started it last week. Uh, it's moving along a little slow due to weather and it being a larger uh, diameter pipe, we've had some, some issues there, but it's moving. Uh, the Alcove River uh, 138 sewer extension, uh, you'll hear a little more about it later, uh, actually next. Uh, those bids have been open. The uh, sewer plant uh, rehab, the uh, equipment and labor uh, bids have been posted or have been moved back to April and March. Uh, March and April, I'm sorry. And uh, so we'll, those will be coming up here pretty soon. Get that moving. Uh, 
the water modeling for the distribution system. We the Moon Singleton has completed that. Uh, we have the report for the northern section uh, and how that's going to be affected by Publix. Uh, so we have that information now. Uh, the 30 inch raw water line that Wiedemann and Singleton's uh, in the uh, design process should be out to bid uh, sometime early March. Uh, it was all ready to go and DOT, DOT decided to add a ramp. So there was a little bit of redesign that had to be done. So that's almost completed. And as uh, Logan mentioned earlier, the Loganville water extension is uh, we're getting close on it. Need that final easement on the Loganville end, and uh, we'll be uh, moving forward. If you got any questions, I'll be more than happy to try to answer those. Any questions from Mr. Middlebrooks? If not, We'll move on uh, to the uh, sanitary sewer system improvements on Alcoga River outfall, Rodney. Thank you again, Mr. Little. This is the, uh, the Highway 138 uh, sewer extension as part of the bond uh, uh, proceeds. Uh, this uh, sewer line will run from 138 uh, along the Alcoga River down to Pump station is located on Michael Edison Road. Low bids, low bids came in at one million five hundred fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, that was Mid South Builders, uh, and this is the contractor that is currently installing the water line along uh, Seventy Eighth. So we expect them to move pretty quickly. Uh, so we're asking for your approval for the one, uh, 1.5, as well as the 5% uh, contingencies, uh, just for any unforeseen uh, issues that may arise uh, from that project. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer those as well. That's a significantly better price than we had anticipated, isn't it? Yes. It is. It, it is, Mr. Little, it, but this is also just the phase one, which is the bulk of the project. Um, we're analyzing the, the phase two, and I guess you could call phase three that would run up uh, up 138 a little bit. But this is the huge majority of the project, way under budget. Uh, are there any questions? Is there a motion? I motion we approve. I second it. Motion by Mr. Gregory, second by Mr. Larry Bradley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We will recommend that full council. Mayor, that's all utilities has. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, moving to public safety, Mr. Bradley. Yes, thank you. Well, happy to have Mr. Jack Armstrong here from the fire department tonight to give us a report there. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Uh, good to see the mayor and council all together tonight. Uh, December, uh, you see the report in front of you. Uh, false alarm, false calls 19, which is common with all the uh, HVAC equipment coming on uh, working. We did have four fires. One was just an outside rubbish fire. We did have a fire on Cook Street, which was uh, very limited to the uh, the kitchen cabinets. Uh, then one fire that we worked with uh, Walton County on uh, Old Athens Highway, and then a vehicle fire. Uh, the good intent calls you see are up, but that is in relationship to our EMS calls and our COVID-19 response. Uh, Walton County EMS has been fairly gracious in uh, working with us and assessing the patient and keeping uh, some of our people from having to be uh, quite the forefront of it. So that's where we're seeing the increase in the good intent calls. Um, outside of that, uh, it's a fairly common December. Our health is improving at the fire station. Uh, I think we're on the other side as far as internally with our uh, COVID stuff. Uh, so currently now, I don't know that we have anybody out. Uh, if mayor or council has any questions for me, I'll entertain them at this time. 
we are happy to hear that health report that you gave there that we're doing well going forward. I would just like one question on the Cook Street fire, which was very limited. Can you attribute the low amount of damage to any particular aspect? Was it quick response or how? Or I, it, it, the, the fire was largely extinguished by the homeowners when we got there. Uh, I think we used less than a gallon of water from one of our portable oh. cans and just cleaned more of it up. And we'll call it at a, at a $2,000 loss in a, what we estimate is a property value of a $45,000 house by uh, Arnold Properties. It's one of their uh, structures. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Armstrong? Fine. Thank you, Jack. We'll move to the police department now, Chief Watts. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Uh, it's good to be back with you guys this evening. Uh, you have my numbers for December uh, reporting the, the stats on that, but I kind of wanted to uh, go over our year-end caps for December, uh, and I want to start out with giving you our uh, year-end totals from our Joint Operations Unit. You know, I kind of brag on these guys because it's a proactive unit that uh, every day goes out here and uh, really goes after the, the criminal element for us. Their year in total for arrests, felony arrests, adult arrests was 122 for the year. Um, misdemeanor was 12. They uh, ended up taking approximately 77 guns off the street this year, which is uh, from a law enforcement standpoint, that's very significant. They executed uh, 20 search warrants and uh, executed 11 uh, cell phone search warrants, uh, made numerous cases, 22 marijuana cases, 10 cocaine, 20 methamphetamine cases, uh, two heroin, and uh, 17 that are other drugs. Uh, another thing that I want to uh, go over is our year in totals for uh, our total calls for service uh, for the year is actually down. Uh, in 2019, we ended with like 32,252, and then 2020, it went down to 20,453, which is uh, uh, down 36%. Our area checks, which I thought this was pretty significant, I think it kind of attributes to uh, how effective we're being as a law enforcement agency in our community. Area checks for 2019 was 27,656, and uh, our area checks for 2020 was 104,660, which is up by like a 278%. And what that tells you is, is our men and women in blue are out there actually actively patrolling our uh, community and our streets and our businesses. And I, I do believe that attributes to the effectiveness of it. Our citizen complaints are down. Uh, they're down by 38%. And uh, I think that is attributed to the uh, uh, level of training that we uh, utilize here within the organization. And I'm very proud of that because uh, our arrests are up. We're actually up by 10% on arrest. And uh, to have the citizen complaints down and our use of force is down uh, 2019. Uh, we had 61 use of force, and in 2020, we had 43. So that's a uh, negative 29%. We're down 29% from the use of force. Um, I'm very proud of our men and women in blue and, uh, and how effective they've been, especially, you know, operating during this uh, pandemic. Um, and I can't say much more about them other than they just do a great job. Uh, another thing we did in December was we were able to uh, – with funds that were donated to the police department, we were able to sponsor uh, several families with the shop with a cop. Uh, and I'm with that, I'd, I'd entertain any questions if you should have any. Any questions? Any, from any of the committee or anyone else? Chief, we appreciate the good job that y'all have done throughout, you know, last year and continue to do this year. And, just when you've got your people together, just tell them we appreciate it. Yes, sir. I sure will. Thank you. That's all we have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Uh, moving to Ms. Malcolm, planning and code. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll go to Mr. Kelly mm -hmm. and ask for the monthly report, please. Thank you, Ms. Malcolm. Um, yeah, the report you have before you there is uh, for the month of December. Uh, we did uh, 102 code inspections, wrote a total of 131 uh, permits that month. We had five new businesses open, uh, four that closed. We um, had pretty much the same major projects going on that we have been um, Main Street Apartments at 698 South Broad Street. They've started leasing and filling up 
um, under a temporary CO at the moment until they get some um, landscaping and drainage issues resolved. But uh, they're 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 going. Um, we've also got the uh, ready. Sorry, got the ready clinic and Grace Monroe Church all um, all working on finishing their construction project as well. Uh, the city marshals removed 76 signs from the roadway. Uh, they did 146 repair cleanup notices uh, and did re-inspections on those. They investigated tamper, six tampering cases and wrote eight citations on that. Um, as far as the planning commission goes, they had a request for a variance uh, at 606 and 603 Alcove Street uh, on which they recommended denial. Uh, request for a variance at 132 Pine Press Drive, which they recommended to approve with conditions. Uh, they also had a request for a rezone from PRD to B2 at Bold Springs Avenue, which they recommended approval to B1. Uh, subsequently, most of these have been approved by you all, uh, except for the, the one at, uh, on Alcove Street, which you'll discuss next week, I believe. And uh, the preliminary plat was approved for 455 Vine Street in that same time period. The balance of the reports there in front of you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Kelly? If not, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Malcolm. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, moving to Mr. Ross Bradley, uh, Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Krasik, would you mind uh, stepping in and sharing with us, please, ma'am? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, you'll see the ED report there. Um, I give you a cut part of the reports that you have much more pages of um, following this. That's what I'll review and look at later if you'd like to. And these are the numbers based on our trade area. This is that data where they track smart devices um, anonymously, and we actually get good customer patterns, good numbers of how many people are actually in downtown, at Walmart, other areas in Monroe. And it's been a really helpful tool for us to track the recovery from COVID. So we'll see this snapshot here on the report is um, actually our central business district is what the um, degree that this measure. So you can see there in March, now March 15th, that was the car show. You see that upward spike there. That was the car show day. So that was the last big day we had downtown. And you can see how the tr customer traffic greatly decreases during the time we were shut down in COVID. But what you also can see is the recovery getting into the fall months is back higher than it was earlier in the year. Um, this is one of those, it's another data point that kind of supports what Beth was saying about the increase in shopping local and sales tax. And then the, that other big spike that you see around October, that would be fall fest. We did that on October 31st. So that's what that counts from. We don't have the Christmas parade in place numbers yet. Just it goes through the end of um, November. But I will say that this is, we also have tracked other shopping centers in, in town to kind of see the recovery. And downtown was hit the hardest as far as traffic, um, but has bounced back really well. Um, other things to note in the pages following the more detailed reports, there's um, a retail leakage report in there, meaning the customer base that shops here, how much um, additional spending is still available for businesses to locate here and not oversaturate the spending power in this community. Um, and you'll see when you look at that, there's still a lot of room for retail growth, which is positive with obviously Monroe Pavilion. That's also one of the reasons they're having a lot of um, good signings with uh, additional um, businesses announcing there. Um, but that's just a good sign. And that's kind of a gauge that we use to know who to recruit, what areas we need to um, encourage more business development. So that's for y'all to kind of see. You also see that we're growing according to these numbers, um, how home values are going up. And again, it shows you the map too. So it's not just Monroe. This is actually our true customer base that travels here today and in 2020 to shop Monroe. So that will continue to grow as we have more businesses. But it's, it's encouraging. It's good good data for us to look at and know. Some other things to mention from the report, we are finalizing our 2021 event calendar, which we'll be holding loosely, just like we did last year. Um, the first event that will happen downtown at this point is the car show, which is on March 13th. We are still planning for four concerts this summer and Fall Fest and the Farmer's Market. Um, as we have those dates and finalize some details, I'll bring that back for everyone for your information. Uh, we are beginning our sponsorship drive again um, for these to pay for the expenses of these events. We're very fortunate that last year, even 
the crazy economy, all of our sponsors met their commitment and kept what they had pledged at the end of the year. So we were able to do a modified event calendar. So we're very thankful for how just faithful people were to um, community events. A couple other things on here. The tree board is coordinating an Arbor Day event. We're planning to give away over 200 saplings that day. I'll give you details for that. They're, I think they're planning on doing it at the visitor center where people can come and get a tree. So those will be free trees to get out in our community. Um, I'll pass on details once they finalize all that. And um, we have moved our downtown reception for sponsors and volunteers to March 1st. We were planning on that end of January and just didn't feel comfortable doing um, that event with the rising numbers of COVID cases in Walton County. So we've shifted that to March. And if you have any other questions or details on that, um, be happy to answer them. Thank you, Ms. Krasik. It is, uh, I really appreciate how hard y'all work. I can't imagine trying to plan events, not knowing if they're going to actually happen or not, but y'all been diligent. And I know everyone in Monroe and around the area is very thankful. So, uh, are there any other questions for the council, Mayor? Um, Sadie, first, uh, and, and I second what Ross said, I really appreciate how adaptable uh, your office is. It, it's, you know, going by the seat of our pants with uh, not only not only weather that we usually get, but, you know, COVID is kind of thrown a wrench into things. Um, did you, were you surprised by anything on this report? Um, yes, I, I'm surprised with how the numbers this fall surpassed last fall. I mean, I, I, I'm glad it's rebounded, but it's, it's surprising to me that Fall Fest was bigger than the car show, which was, you know, before we really had felt the impact of COVID locally. Um, and and it's in line with the kind of the economic projections that analysts for the state of Georgia are saying too, that businesses that were hit the hardest are gonna see the greatest growth coming out of it and then it'll kind of stabilize. But I'm, I'm surprised that we're seeing it this soon. I'm so thankful for the few closings that we've had as a direct result. We've had, we still had business growth and new openings and that's, that's just remarkable. So part of it was that we were positioned really well before this and so it helps us with recovery and that's a credit to all of you and decision makers and our local businesses and citizens so we're, we're just very fortunate there's no doubt we're going well, through a, a tough rough patch right now with with the covid but the community has been extremely resilient it's pretty impressive to see um what about and we'll see those numbers for the parade for the christmas parade next month you think I'm, I'm excited about, about seeing those too. That's going to be great. I hope so. I will say we um, usually a, a downtown event wins like Walton County's best community event. Um, and for the first time, the Christmas parade won that this year by the voters of the Walton Tribune. So that's a surprise. It's our crazy idea. <laughs> if there's no other questions, uh, Mr. Mayor, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Earl. Thanks, Sadie. Um, moving to parks, uh, Masha. Masha, I think you're muted. So I can jump back. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Bailey, please. I didn't know whether to jump in and just start talking or, <laughs> or what to do. Um, parks update. Uh, we've had a, a steady like increase to me in activity at parks, especially at Pilot Matthews. Uh, Childers had a great uh, light display again this year. Um, Public Works uh, Central Services guys have been taking those lights down as weather permits. Um, Pilot Park, if you've been by in the last uh, probably three to four weeks, you've noticed that the fence is now white. So that entire project is complete uh, that was proposed uh, and presented to council uh, this past year. We have uh, in the 2021 CIP, I had proposed that we add uh, multiple shade structures uh, to Pilot and other areas. We've actually ordered three for Pilot Park. Uh, hopefully, they should be installed sometime late winter, early spring. And I feel like on uh, some of the lower areas uh, that didn't have as much natural shade, that this is going to provide a good, uh, good kind of a rest uh, to get out of the sunshine for parents, uh, some of the younger children. Um, so that'll be kind of the final little push for pilot. Uh, Matthews Park, the restroom uh, that was delayed, <laughs> along with everything else uh, that's been delayed, is 
hopefully going to be installed in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are working on uh, utilities, and uh, we've got the pad site started grading today. Everything's flagged off. The old restroom was actually demoed uh, about a week ago, and it just it looks better. Uh, it's less of a liability for the city. That's something that we'll see at some of the other parks, too, that after we've evaluated everything, that we're going to start removing those during the winter months. Um, and then two, uh, CIP for this year shows uh, additional restrooms. I think the next park that will probably receive one that's been requested essentially will be Pilot. And I think we can put it right in the edge of the community garden, but it won't uh, affect the overall usage of the community garden. Um, so I think that'll be a good addition and something that's well used. Uh, but. You know, at, at month to month, I've always, I think, council, mayor, everyone for what we've done with the parks and allowing us to do it. It kind of, I get to be a kid again and build fun stuff. So it makes it entertaining on a day to day basis for me. So, uh, but I just, I think it's been great what you guys have done and allowed us to do for the city and for citizens and visitors alike because it's never shy of compliments. And uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'll be glad to take them. I had a, a comment that, um, you know, there's no doubt that this past year has exploited this weakness in a lot of communities. Um, and so I appreciate the diligence on, on your team and you for getting this done. And I hope that everyone's paying attention to how important these parks have become in our community. Um, so we continue improving them and developing a system that uh, not only attracts, but uh, promotes, you know, healthy being outside, playing in the sun behavior. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? If not, we'll turn it back over to you, the mayor. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. I'm moving to items for discussion. Uh, we'll jump to Alcove Street next week uh, as, as we table that uh, at, at last month's meeting. I'm moving to the public hearing uh, variance for 1360 Armistead Circle, Mr. Kelly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the applicant, Tammy, too, she's uh, requesting a variance for the requirement for a um, side or rear entry garage in an existing neighborhood. Um, it, uh, it's in keeping with the remainder of the neighborhood. The staff recommendation is for approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation is also for approval. Uh, the subdivision is basically 50 plus years old. Um, might be one of the few things in Monroe older than me. No, just, um, but anyways. It, uh, it was developed by the actually the applicants um, in-laws some time ago in the, I think, late 50s to mid 60s. And um, like I said, the, the request is in keeping with the standards of the neighborhood as it developed. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Are there any questions for Patrick? I think the way it sits on the lot, that's probably the only way they can take it. So, um, yeah, I appreciate you doing that. Um, yes, sir. Moving to the application, application of beer and wine package sales at m and Food Mart, Mr. Kelly. Um, I believe that application is in order um, if the city attorney concurs. Yes, that application is in order for your consideration next week, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Any questions for Patrick or Paul? Hearing none, we'll bring that up next week. Moving uh, to the first reading of offensive and miscellaneous provisions. For the possession of marijuana ordinance amendment. Logan. I'll be happy to take that, Mayor, if you'd like me to. Yes, sir, please. It's real It's real simple. We're, this is just a technical cleanup. I um, apologize if this, uh, I know we got some requests from media on what is this. There is nothing magical, no big change. We're not decriminalizing marijuana. That We thought this had been done three years ago in an ordinance update we did, and somehow it got missed. This is just a technical cleanup to the language of our existing marijuana ordinance. It doesn't change any of the realities of our marijuana, our existing marijuana ordinance, other than doing some technical cleanup. It's still a city ordinance violation for possession of less than an ounce. Uh, police still has the discretion to cite uh, someone for possession of less than an ounce, either under this city ordinance or under the state statute if they so choose. Um, generally, it's a little more efficient process to cite them under the city ordinance than the state ordinance, which is why local law enforcement and the chief can chime on this if he wants, prefers to have this ordinance on the books. 
uh, but it is a standard just technical cleanup. There's nothing magical or different. It's still a max fine of $1,000 uh, for possession of marijuana less than an ounce. And they can always um, bind their case over to Superior Court if they don't want to uh, pursue the case in Monroe Municipal Court. That's all this is. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Paul? I have a question um, for Paul. Um, in regards to the wording, it doesn't give any opportunity for prescription um, drugs or um, medicinal marijuana. Should, should we not have some provision in there for that or refer back to the state code? Um, I don't Remember think that we back because that does cover it. Yeah, I, I don't think that we should because I think you got the state statute in place. I mean, I can we can certainly so. we can certainly look into that. But generally, the experience is is that if it's a uh, a medical marijuana card, which possession of marijuana, there are some limited medical there's limited medical oils currently, but in Georgia just straight up marijuana leaves, even for medical, still aren't approved yet. I think that may happen in this session. I'm not up to speed on that. We'll, we'll be happy to look into that, Ms. Malcolm, but we reviewed and looked at other cities that still have, not all cities have possession of marijuana less than an ounce on their books as a city ordinance. A lot of them either never had it or have gotten rid of them and deferred and left it just at the state level. But we'll be happy to look at the medical marijuana issue, but my general initial response is, um, since we don't really have full comprehensive state legislation on all types of medical, uh, on all types of marijuana for medical purposes, that we probably should just leave it simple as it is. And then, and then um, if, if they've got what we call a medical card for the, uh, for the oils, the CBD oils or the THC oils, you know, um, I really don't see the police officers even writing a ticket for somebody who has a medical card on THC oils. Are there any other questions for Paul? Paul, do you have a reading? Uh, no, Mayor, this will be for reading next week. Okay, thank you. Uh, that'll be it for uh, discussion items. We'll move to Items requiring action in the local water line change order number two, Rodney. Uh, yes, this is the section of line from the river at Cedar Ridge to the sharp curve there in Cedar Ridge. You're familiar with it's about 3,500 feet past the entrance to Cedar, uh, Cedar Ridge. What's happened is, and this this line's being designed by William and Singleton as part of the 30-inch raw water line as well. Uh, but as we started filling the 20-inch to uh, pressure test the line, we started having some pressure issues around the hospital, uh, Home Depot area, and it's due to a 10-inch line feed the 20 at this time. So. This this short piece here, this 3,500 foot, would bring it up to another 10 inch that is on Cedar Ridge and tie it in. So we'd have two tens feeding the 20 until the 20 is until the rest of the 20 is designed and installed. Uh, and this is the uh, change order from uh, the contractor, uh, Mid South Builders, at 333,000. $342, and that is material and labor both. Thank you, Rodney. Are there any questions? I've got one quick comment, Mayor. This is, we're booking it under the Monroe Loganville waterline connection, but this is not subject to that 50 50 split with the city of Loganville because this is a, a major system improvement on our side of the system. So um, we won't be splitting that, but we just, since the work is already uh, taking place on the same line, we went ahead and, and moved forward with the change order in this, this manner. Thank you. Any questions for Rodney or Logan? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll move. 
have a motion. I'm going to say that was from Ross Bradley and a second by Mr. Nathan Little. Is that good with you all? Any yes, discussion? Sir. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 How about this? Anyone opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Motion carries. That passes. Resolution for support of grant match application for 2021 Historic Preservation Fund, CLG Survey and Planning Grant. Uh, Ms. Krawczyk and Mr. Rosenthal. This is, um, this is the same grant we applied for last year to um, update our historic survey, which is a requirement of, to maintain our certified local government status. And um, the Historic Preservation Commission has worked on the grant application this year. And Krista Carroll is on the line if anyone has a question about the details of this grant. Um, but this is a resolution agreeing to the match portion in the event that we're awarded the grant. Thank you, Ms. Krawczyk. Are there any questions for Sadie? Mr. Rosenthal, is there anything you'd like to add? No, Mayor, I'll just read the resolution for you. Uh, thank you, please. Resolution of the Mayor and the Council of City Monroe supporting the city's grant match application for the 2021 HP Historic Preservation Fund CLG Survey and Planning Grant, whereas the city is vested with substantial power to regulate the use of property within the city for purposes of maintaining health, safety, security, peace, and general welfare, whereas the city has legislative power to adopt reasonable resolutions, regulations relating to property within the city, which no provision has been made by the general law, whereas the city is within the city limits numerous historic properties for which preservation care thereof is of great importance and concern to the mayor and council, whereas the city staff desires to engage in the application process for the 2021 Historic Preservation Fund CLG Survey and Planning Grant in order to further the betterment of the city's historic properties by way of updating the city's historic property survey and to maintain the city's status as a certified local government under statewide certified local gov government program whereas the application process for the grant is necessary to receive the grant and accomplish an update to the city's historic property survey, whereas the mayor and council support the city's efforts to engage in the process, whereas the mayor and council desire to authorize the city to contribute a 40% match to the grant as required by the grant terms, whereas the above reference 40% match would not exceed the amount of $18,436 due to the maximum available amount awarded pursuant to the grant, whereas all stated goals of this resolution are incorporated fully herein, now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council as follows. The preamble of the resolution shall be considered as hereby incorporated by reference. City staff is permitted to engage in the application process for the awarding of the 2021 Historic Preservation Fund CLG Survey and Planning Grant. And the required funding match on the part of the city is 40%, and the city shall contribute a maximum of $18,436 in available funds, with said funds to be used to represent the city's required 40% match for the 2021 Historic Preservation Fund CLG Survey and Planning Grant as awarded. So resolved the second day of February, 2021. That is the resolution, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for Mr. Rosenthal? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. A motion by Mr. Dickinson. Is there a second? second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing that on request of a vote is yay or nay individually. Uh, Larry Bradley. Yay. Ross Bradley. Yay. Myosha Crawford. Yes. Thank you, Myosha. David Dickinson. Yes. Norma Garrett. Yes. Thank you. Tyler Gregory. Tyler Gregory, yay or nay? He looks frozen. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. And Nathan Little? Yes. Lee Malcolm? Yay. Motion carries that yeah. pass. How about now? <laughs> You're good. <laughs> You're great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moving to the mayor's update real quick. Uh, we have the county comp uh, comprehensive transportation plan. A meeting this week with DOT. Um, they were extremely complimentary uh, of uh, our team and, and how they've been working with them. Uh, Ms. Decker was here uh, representing them. Um, we also had some key players from the community, but David Thompson was in on his first one. Um, looks like all systems are go for 
pretty much everything that, that we'd hoped for. And like Logan had said earlier, the, the truck route's been approved to begin construction in the summer of 2022. Um, spoke with uh, Larry Ebert from the hospital last week. You know, we, we are a little bit higher on COVID cases for the city, but we're down a little bit for, for Piedmont. Um, Piedmont Walton is not um, diverting any patients from Walton County, um, but we're not accepting any patients coming from, from out of the area either. Um, we do have uh, beds available in ICU. We do have vents available, um, but we might not have space in the natural ICU unit. ICU unit. Um, but Larry's been juggling that pretty well. Um, I have requested a community vaccination center from uh, the Biden administration. Um, the Newton County, it appears they may be sending the first one to Newton County. Uh, we do have space and we do have what they were looking for um, in, the, in the general population. So that's something that, that I'll stay on them about with Carl Morrow. Um, other than that, I think we're good. Uh, if anybody has any questions for anybody else, uh, have at it. Hearing that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to approve. Thank you, Ross. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody.